And suddenly, this is a 1972 Hunter Compact Junior. It has a pop top. You can have it up on both sides or just on half of it or completely down. Either way, it works just fine. When it's completely down, the Hunter will actually fit in a typical garage. This one has 60 watts of solar power on it. It just charges a traditional 12 volt battery inside. We'll see more about that later. It has a fresh water outlet. You can also hook up to just typical household power. Nothing real fancy or high voltage, just enough to get the TV, microwave, and lights on. When you're traveling, it has a connection for fresh water to be attached and a drainage port. Entry is from the rear. It did not come with wagon wheels. It had a fancy little hubcap scenario. The little storage compartment is an add-on. They used to keep the spare tire right here. Now we just carry the spare in the truck. But you do have a place to hide a small amount of propane, which is actually quite e enough for the road. A little bit messy in there, but you have all the stuff you might need. And here's the connection for the tail lights, etc. At one point, the tail lights kept blowing the fuse on the whenever you hooked up the trailer. As it turned out, if you opened up the little connections here to the back and the front, there was actually a loose metal component bouncing around in there. And every time it made contact with a, an opposing metal component, it would short out the system and burn out the fuse in the tow vehicle. Let's take a look inside. It's pretty cozy in there. The back door is original. It might be nice to someday get this thing refurbished and get a similar but way nicer back door. This one did have some glass replaced on it and it's kind of tacky in my opinion but so far so good like I said let's go inside and have a look let's take a look inside that bathroom as you can see on the wall we put a lot of vintage things a 1972 cloth calendar some little vintage postcards there but probably most impressively is all the original original advertisement for the compact junior Let's see here, what do we got? Let's see if we can get that focused, or maybe we just have to read it. It had a it's 975 pounds shipping weight. That propane butane thing is five gallons. And it's a, oh, let's see what else here. Let's get up close. I don't know if it's gonna show in the dark, but I'll zoom in anyway. I'll read it. We have 13 inch wheels. The height is six foot nine with the top up. The width is six four. Oh, let's see, 75 pound tongue weight, I might have, already, might have already said that. Looks like that ice box was pretty huge, 75 pound ice box, which was actually pretty huge. Here's that vintage toilet that we put in. Um, you open it up and it has a pot in there. Nothing fancy, oh, those are bags. Yeah, you need bags to put stuff in. And right there, where it's Cracker Jacks, that was, that is actually a, it is actually a, medicine chest. The mirror broke. I'm trying to figure out a way to fix it without putting the meat glass back in. Of course, like I said, we have the 12 volt lights, but those will also work on the 120 wattage. The little switch to the to the right there is actually just a battery operated light that you can turn off and on. You get those at places like Walmart for $1.298. See the bathroom entrance down there. It has a sliding door. But here we are looking at the pop top up six foot tall and a few inches more height person could actually stand in here that top used to be just fiberglass like over here but with it popped up they wanted it to have a little insulation when it was closed so the people who had it put some foam cushioning in there and it's actually kind of decorative it doesn't look that nice but you can see here we have one of those fantastic fan options where when you pop it open on to the roof there and you turn on the fan, it sucks air in out of the trailer. And that may sound weird, but what you do is 
you open the window, what you do is you open the window and it'll, what you do is you open the window and it'll bring the air from outside in, basically acting as a gigantic fan. It gets pretty cool in here. It looks like the netting, if you want to call it that, or mesh up there has some damage to it, but that's natural. It still works just fine. Those are not holes, even though it looks like holes. Someday it could be replaced, but for now it's, it's keeping, it's intact. And that's just the coating that's on there that you see the crack. So it's not that big a deal. It works, it works just fine. It's not that damaged. It is vintage, you know. It is vintage. Here's a look at the kitchen stovetop sink area. Let's go ahead and take off all those covers so it's possible to see just exactly what it looks like when it's in operation. It has a three burner propane stove that works just fine after all these years and everything checks out safely with you know as far as being safe. It has that stainless steel sink. You can have shore water or water from the 12 and a half gallon onboard storage tank. This is all original. That's what it looked like. You'd think there'd be something fancy going on up here, but there's not. Here's an easy view of the interior living space. Let's take a look at each half and then even the center of this situation. It has an old school flat screen TV, which is an aftermarket. It has a DVD player on it. The curtains on the window there. And if you take off that back cushion, you can actually have the width for a child or an adult to stretch out and snooze. In the, in the original floor plan, you can see that there was just a cushion on the left and on the right of the main living area with a fold up and pop down center table. And you could have had a bed on either side or made that table into another sleeping area making that whole section a gigantic bed. You can also see over here to the left bottom where there used to be the closet and where that 75 pound refrigerator capacity would have been sitting. However, you'll notice in here that that dinette table isn't even there. This one has a aftermarket built-in storage area with storage on the bottom, surface on the top, and a portion in the center where you can put a microwave. And in a second, we'll show you where the slide out table is actually at. You don't need anything huge, just a place to sit down and eat. Now there's something else in the kitchen that we need to go look at. Just think about it, when you're traveling with a trailer, you're always concerned about doors popping open. So we got some baby locks. And just kind of secure them in the certain spots to keep those drawers from opening and, opening and bouncing and vibrating while you're traveling. There's one on there. Oh, that's where we put our refrigerator. Did I mention that? It used to be a storage cabinet down there. We just have a small refrigerator. That's all you really need. Or an ice chest. In, if you, unless you're going somewhere for an extended amount of time, you have to figure out, figure out some other type of situation or one of those really fancy ice chests. But as you can see, there's plenty of storage space. And those little locks keep things closed while you're traveling. Since this is a vintage trailer, we do have some vintage items in here, some little toys for the children, a little tractor there, an old vintage camera, a little jet from the 60s. All those toys are actually vintage. An old telephone that actually works if you had a way to hook it up anymore. Now they did put an air conditioner in this, whoever had it before us. I don't particularly like the way that's in there because I don't think it has adequate ventilation. They have it all covered and cozied up down in the back half take a look at that in a minute so let's take a look at the way that center bed works that's an artificial wood looking floor this thing isn't totally original but it still has that vintage flavor going on so when we want to make that center bed we have some boards that we put there but no matter how you space the boards, there's still little gaps. So there's something else that we put on top of those so that the cushions don't actually start sinking into those gaps. We place, we place thin sheets of plywood, if you want to call it that, fireboard or whatever, on top of those slats. And it makes so those holes are now covered up. It gives it a little bit more support. Let's put the cushions on. 
Now there's a nice cup. Now there's a nice comfy spot for however many people actually will fit in there for everyone's situation. Since this hunter doesn't have the dinette table anymore, take a look at what's going on. So you do have a table. This little centerpiece slides out. And now you have a table that you can sit down at. This is what's underneath the right side cushioned area, the main living space. Those are all the connections for the 60 watt solar panel. Down here, underneath this piece of lumber, straight down in the center, to take that off, there's a traditional 12 volt battery under there. And that little red switch, if you have just the solar, if you don't have the shore power hooked up, you just twist that like a typical water tap, twist it to the right, and now you turned off the ability to have the uh, ground power. Right now it's set on ground, you know, shore power. If you turn it to the right, you turned off the shore power, now it's just gonna run off of solar. It won't run the TV or the microwave, it'll just run the lights and the pump for the water storage. And you wanna make sure that if you do have it plugged in for shore power, that you turn it back to the left position, like it's in right now, and that disconnects the solar because otherwise the shore power has enough current running through the system where it'll basically fry the 12 volt battery. There was that air conditioner scenario that I was mentioning. I really don't like the way that is. I'm not sure what's gonna happen there, but it's there. There's something that we didn't look at yet. This is a 1972 version of how to make that pop top stay up. You can see it's pretty simple. When it's down, of course it folds down. This one's not all the way down because the top is half up. And to make sure the top does stay on, it has these little latches throughout, giving you a securely clamped down top. Let's take a closer look at what I was talking about on those tears. You can see those tears aren't really that big of a deal. That was just basically some sunscreen that they put on there, on the original mesh. So you had a little bit of a protection from the heat and the sun. That's enough light though on a day to light the place up without having to use any electricity. There is more storage down there. It's basically the width of the bench. And there's storage underneath the microwave. I think I might have mentioned that. Down there on the floor, you can see that there is a detector for carbon dioxide and you can put them I've read that you're supposed to mount them low, but we're going to get a second one and also mount it high. There's an old TV guide. And of course your smoke detector. You want to have some safety in these things. And there used to be a propane heater there, but it just didn't seem like it was safe enough because everything is so condensed in here. Not a lot of ventilation on a cold night. So we just decided not to use it and just make sure you had enough blankets. If you have electricity, well, get an electric blanket or electric space heater, a small one, does the job. You can put it in a safe spot. Underneath this bench here, which I'm not going to open up right now, is where the 12-gallon-ish water storage is at. For the TV, if you really wanted to, it works just fine without an actual antenna, as long as you're within the city limits. Or you can just hook up the coaxial cable to this to um, connection here and you seem to be getting enough antenna but you can actually mount an antenna on the outside which we'll look at in a minute and we also discovered that if you're at a RV park you can hook up to their outside connection for whatever cable option they're providing here's that exterior connection for an antenna to be connected or if you're at an RV park and they offer some type of cable service you can hook up your cable when you do have shore power, there are several locations where you can actually plug in whatever accessories you want to plug in. So that's basically the interior of the Hunter trailer. And so, there you have it. A 1972 Hunter Compact Junior trailer.